What is your most expensive mistake? I started working at 12 and started an Edward Jones account to grow the money. I only worked 8-9 hours a week. So it wasn't a ton of money. But the account grew to about 20,000 by the time I was 16. Also, when you're a kid you have your parent be custodian of the account meaning at the end of the day, you have to go through them to access the money. Anyway when I was 16 my dad said he couldn't pay the rent and we were going to be homeless. I asked him how much he needed, and he said a little under a grand. So, not wanting to be homeless, him and I came to an agreement that I would loan him 1000 from the account. Another key detail is, when the custodian wants to remove funds from the account, they still need to get the signature of the account holder me. After school my dad brings this huge packet from Edward Jones and says hey you need to sign this. Thanks again son. You're helping out the family big time. Here's where I ducked up big time. Trusting my own dad. I didn't read through the paperwork. I just signed it and went to my room. Two years later. My dad has ran off abruptly to Texas with his girlfriend. Left me stranded it was okay though I moved back in with mom and I'm starting college. I visit my Edward Jones agent to strategize how to pull money from the account for school but to still have it show growth. He pulls up my account and the majority of the account is gone. Confused. I ask what happened. And he goes yeah about 2 years ago. It looks like your dad pulled X amount out of the account. My dad took almost everything under the guise he was only taking 1000. If I would have read that paperwork. I would have seen that. But I trusted him and didn't read it. Big mistake. But a lesson I'm glad I learned young. Never sign shit without reading everything first. And always open and read all your mail. I never spoke to him again. And he died last spring. It wasn't about the money I lost. It was about the principle of stealing from your own child. And leaving him in the dust. He also did some other incredibly ducked up shit I won't get into. It does bum me out we never reconciled. Because we did have a lot of good times together too. But the fact is it was on him to apologize and make things right. Not me. And he never really tried to do so. Not doing more research into hiring a roofing contractor. Paid 13k for the shittiest job ever. Flashing messed up. Rotten sheathing not replaced. Nails blown clear through the singles. Reusing shingles when they started running low. Water running behind my siding. No flashing around my chimney. It was a shit show. They didn't even clean up. They left the old roof and nails strewn across my backyard and lawn. I pushed and pushed, and next thing I know, he's disappeared and I have water running in my house. My insurance guy refused to help, and I had to hire an honest roofer and redo the entire job for another 13k. The second guy cut me a break, since he knew I was in a bad spot. Last I heard, that guy was banned from doing work for a few insurance companies. But he changes his name and moves to another city of state often. He would take the money. Hire random migrant crews. But not give them enough for material shingles. Cork. Flashing and demand the jobs all be done in one day. Flat top roof paid 37k in 2017. Come 2020. It starts to leak. Still under warranty but. Company has gone under. Welcome to another 46k. To redo the entire thing. Duck my life. Not saying that this was the case for you, but always be extremely wary of your contractors. Try to figure out if they are essentially a numbered company either their legal name is a numbered company, or their parent company is. Examples of this would be Jack's roofing written of the website and truck. But the fine print says 17,425 Canada Incorporated. That company would be legally gone 2 months from now, and a new one called something similarly generic would be in its place. Got promoted to being a warehouse manager many years ago. Didn't receive any training really because the person I was replacing was promoted to another position and they were trying to learn how to do that job while they were supposed to be teaching how to do my new job. At some point, we started to run low on a few key products that were more in demand. So I asked the guy who was supposed to be training me how much I should have in stock, then based my order on that. Well, they didn't tell me there was a 8, 9 week lead time on this. So now everything that was on order was essentially already spoken for and I'd have to place another order to maintain my stock for the warehouse. 
this happened multiple times and never knew what the sales guys were selling promising other customers as well as just taking items from my stock instead of waiting for their dedicated orders. It got messy. There wasn't really any systems in place. Well. It got to the point where all of these back orders had started coming in. And we were heading into a slow point in the season. Boss eventually starts asking, why all these items aren't put away in stock etc. Why don't I have any room and that leads to him looking more closely at what was order and what is still on order. Turns out I had ordered about 1.4 million dollars over what I should have. Didn't get fired. Got demoted out of the warehouse though and put back to installations. Turns out it was a bit of a blessing in disguise for the boss as the supplier increased their price 15% the year after, and another 10% the year after that. They never did let me live that down though. Too long didn't read I temporarily cost a company 1.4 million dollars over ordering stock, because I wasn't trained in how to do my job properly. What kind of company allows an employee to order 1.4 million worth stuff without someone from accounting looking over it? Especially a new employee to that role. Your company is playing with fire and does not have proper checks and balances in place. Freshman year of college I thought my final exam was at 11.30. It was at 9.30. The exam was 40% of my grade. So I failed. I lost my scholarship and had to pay to retake the class. Not caring for my teeth when young. I bought a boat for almost no money and now I'm broke. I was working in a health career and a co-worker emailed me a request to move data fields is 123 from a test server over to production. No explanation. No flags. That's it. I was swamped at the time. Dealing with red flag requests. Getting hundreds of emails a day. And I didn't get to it. The casu that didn't get moved 8 million in claims didn't go out. Not taking diabetes seriously cost me the vision in my right eye. I feel yo. T1 here. Didn't even use a meter for 7 years. Warmed insulin and no doctor visits in that time frame. January 2nd of this year started getting an ulcer in my left leg. That got me terrified. And into the doctor and endo finally. I wish I had cared more in the past. But what can you do but move forward. Hope you're doing better. Considering. Rushed into buying a car. Bought a salvaged vehicle that looked like it was in great shape. It drove fine. And it was exactly what I needed at the time. About a month in some frame damage was discovered that made it hard to steer. And there were no ducking airbags. I tried to turn around and sell it once I found out. But I couldn't in good conscience sell an unsafe vehicle to anyone. So I pay 7k to install new airbags and have a few other things done. Once the car was safe. I felt like I could stick with it a little longer then the transmission started leaking. I had grown attached to the car by this time. So I figured I'd at least get an estimate on fixing the leak. Even if it meant dropping the transmission. Mechanic gave me a call moments after I dropped it off to tell me he was worried that if he dropped the transmission he wouldn't be able to put my car back together. Because the repairs on the car were so bad the transmission was essentially holding the whole front end together. Sold it for scrap, and basically lost 15k total on that terrible purchase. Taking out a 5000 loan, to help my mom with her very very past due bills. Long story short, she ends up missing bills again and not learning her lesson. Using the web browser on a flip phone in the early 2000s. My parents almost killed me. Lmao oh the panic of trying to close it, when you accidentally pressed the internet button. Toss up between my last marriage and the time I ran my boss's 3.5 million yacht aground on a submerged sandbar on the intracoastal waterway south of Charleston, SC. Losing my USB that had 50 bitcoin on it. It was a prize for getting second in a Guitar Hero contest hosted by the university I was attending. My father died in 2007 and left me and my sister 115k each. I used it to buy a new house. I was 25 at the time. Didn't know shit about the process to buy a home. So needless to say I bought something I couldn't afford. Then the market crashed in 2008. I lost the house and my inheritance. I was more upset about blowing my father's savings than losing the house. Lesson learned. 
agreeing to not having the septic tank inspected before closing on our home. It was pumped recently, so it must be fine, right? Turns out it was actually in bad shape and needed to be fully replaced. Over 20,000. Flunking out of a university. I worked for UPS for a season. I failed to get a signature for a package containing a firearm at a home where I was aware the owner bought and sold guns. Package goes missing. Crimes get committed. ATF gets involved. I wish I knew the theoretical price tag on that mistake other than never being able to work for that company again. Edit a tad more context at the end. My most recent was going to the doctor. Went for a pap smear. Asked four questions relating to my birth control and the vagina. Since I was seeing a geno that day, received a 413 bill because the four questions I asked were deemed outside the scope for the appointment. Over 100 per duck in question. Unemployed in New York City for 3 months paying 4,000 month in rent. I answered honestly during a medical evaluation when I could have easily just checked no next to everything on the form and now I'm at risk of not being able to get the career I desire because of it. Even if I somehow do manage to avoid being completely denied, it still will have cost me thousands of dollars in psychological testing. I'll enter next 5000. Never saw him or the money again. But that could be the best 5000 you ever spent. He sounds like a real loser and your life is bound to be far better without him. Law school. I didn't want to go in the first place and should have dropped out in my first semester. I failed the bar twice by less than 5 points each time second time was even less, but I can't remember I think it was just under 2 points. My state doesn't allow appeals. I'm over 200k in debt and now stuck in a non-profit job that has completely burned me out. I've been here over 5 years and gotten 2 promotions, but the job is soul sucking. Started having panic attacks after going back to the office in July. My boss just quit I'm sensing from burnout and the culture of our organization and I'm being moved under someone who is extremely disorganized. My department went back to remote work and I did get scouted for an interview for a position that would have a significant pay increase, but they don't qualify for my loan forgiveness program, so I can't take the job. I'm around 4 years away from loan forgiveness, but even that's a shot in the dark. I'm hoping that I'll be able to get my shit together by the time they require us to go back into the office, but at this point I haven't even been on the train in 2 years and I'm scared of having another panic attack. I want to take a break from work for a while, but we can't afford it. I'm tired. Left my laptop on the front counter of my work while going into another room. We are in a major homeless area. Came back 15 minutes later in mine and the receptionist's laptops were stolen. Fairly decent laptop more than the actual equipment. Lost 10 years of work scripts and plays. Databases. Artwork. And hundreds upon hundreds of lesson plans. I now back up to the cloud all the time. Bought my first home by myself in April. 2008 I might as well have thrown all my money in the garbage. My wedding. I wanted to get married by Elvis in Las Vegas just the two of us, but my fiancé had visions of wearing white tie and tails. I was insecure and just went along with it, and the entire evening was so stressful, and one of the worst nights of my life, because I was so worried about what everyone thought, and if they were having a good time. It's been 23 years and I can't bring myself to even look at pictures. We are happily married now, but the wedding was just a colossal waste of money. When I was a teenager I was using the detachable shower head. For you know, I was leaning against the wall, hid my finish, and as I was in the thrill of the moment spun 360 degrees and fell out the shower taking the rod, liner, and curtain with me, while holding the shower head still yanked it out the wall taking a foot of tile out and a chunk of drywall. It was about 1200 to get it fixed. I told my parents I freaked out because I thought I saw a spider. Back in June I went to Africa for charity work and got sick drinking from a private well. I've been in hospitals for 4 months now and because most of that time my health insurance didn't cover me outside of the country I owe the government 170,000 for covering my hospital stays in the Congo and Kenya. I can't leave the United States until I pay it off. 
but I'm already disabled from a car wreck a decade ago. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll take care of this one. Since it occurred less than 24 hours ago. Drinking with friends after a wedding. My girlfriend and I are staying with my best friend in his little office area as are out of town. I get really drunk from taking too many shots and pounding beers. I lay down. Struggle to not throw up and end up passing out. I wake up by my girlfriend scream. Look to see me holding my dick and pissing all over the corner of his wall which holds his gaming PC. So there it is. I hate my life and the shame I hold has no bounds. He was surprisingly okay about it and incredibly nice. I'm not sure how he hasn't stabbed me. Got a DUI. Had to take a class to get my license back. Girl in the class needed a ride home. Started flirting and asked her out. Fast forward 15 years and we are now married with two kids. Worth every cent.